hello, my name is Cécile Gann. I'm a French-born artist living in Belmont, Massachusetts. Um, I've been painting all my life. Uh, I started painting under the tutelage of my grandmother. And, um, and I came back to painting after I was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, a little bit with a different focus this time because I, was, I didn't see painting as a competitive uh, way to display my skills, but more as a way to really <laughs> figure out how I was going to make it to the next hour. Hmm. Um, and it's just been an amazing journey. So in general, um, I figured out a way in my head to really hack all the negative thoughts that I have and to uh, really focus on only the very minute things that I see myself doing in my day or that I plan as my tasks um, and to really focus on what's on my brush right now and nothing else. And I think it has an amazing meditative quality that you can find to it. So not thinking about exhibits, not thinking about how you want to get published in another magazine, but really thinking about how lovely the color is and how amazing this texture is and how gorgeous this combination of colors has turned out. But also noticing, for example, the things that are not working. And it's never a problem because you can always scratch it. And so just seeing things more as a game, a game that you would play when you're a child and you're building, for example, sand castles, and less as um, a process or product that needs to turn out perfectly. And um, I'm in super remission. Um, I, um, this past year, um, I always wanted to volunteer for my hospital, uh, but somehow um, it was difficult reaching out to patients who were diagnosed. I found that it was very, it, it made a lot of different feelings surface that I wasn't very comfortable with, but I wanted to do something. And so in, um, when the pandemic hit in uh, April, I started, I donated 10 of my works for uh, COVID-19 for Mass General. And I was able to raise funds. I mean, so that was the goal, but it turned out pretty well. And I was just really ex thrilled that, that I had done something, you know, because nowadays volunteering is very difficult. If you want to volunteer for a food bank, um, there are all these concerns about getting infected. So it's, it's not easy. And then recently, I've been working on uh, making these um, compassionate cards for Dana Farber. Um, all of them are going to be a small piece of um, original art. And uh, so I'm doing hundreds of little paintings, which is really cool because I've never done uh, things on such a small scale but I'm painting them at the same time on a huge piece of plyboard. And then I select the ones that I like, I rework them a thousand times, I gloss them, and then I cut them out with a knife. And then I'm going to glue them on cards. And um, I'm also working with um, a good friend of mine at the, the college who's going to help me um, craft some thoughtful words to put in the cards because I think uh, as a patient, you often get cards. People don't realize when they send you a card and you're sick. Usually the cards are for people who are just going through a rough patch, but not a two or three year deal. And the cards are things like get well soon. <laughs> and so the, that's how I started having this idea that I wanted cards with a message that is really appropriate for people who are dealing with a long-term disease. When I was diagnosed, it, 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 was, it was super isolating in a way because 
everyone else's life was, was unchanged and mine had taken so many bad turns. Uh, I felt incredibly alienated, but I, I do feel that, um, and I know it sounds ridiculously um, positive, but that the, the virus in a way is, um, has the potential for a huge moment of unity because everyone is affected in very similar ways by this virus. Everybody feels lonely. Everybody has to find ways to reach out to their friends, has to maybe try and better understand what they need to be happy. Um, and so I think we can, we have so many more ways to empathize with others than when it's just one single person who is going through a terrible situation and everyone else is not. So in other words, I just find that like the pandemic is, because it's affecting everyone, has the potential for creating more unity. I work in my house. I have two teenage boys who are, are very much online, who need a lot of supervision, but they don't need me. It's sort of a paradoxical balance. So I have a lot of free time. Um, and really finding, um, doing a lot of um, under layers and working um, through layers. So for example, right now I'm experimenting with um, pigments that are a lot um, more transparent because I'm, uh, I'm taking a printing class online and it's making me really think about transparency, which is something that I haven't explored very much before. So, so my process is very project driven and that also keeps me very sane because I only have to learn what I need for the project. Yeah, I would say I'm a hyper intuitive as a painter. Um, and I keep working until it feels like it's done. And of course, you know, a lot of people talk about this. Um, overworking can kill what you're doing. Uh, but I think um, you, there's like a tremendous amount of time. that I don't really count the time that I'm actually painting. I would say, I don't know, four or five hours a day, easily. But it's not, um, it's, it's not like any other type of work. It's not cumbersome because I'm, my mind is so engaged with the puzzle. And so the process is a lot like making a puzzle, finding the right pieces, moving the pieces until they flow, uh, until they connect, until it looks balanced. Sometimes leaving it aside for a few days and then coming back to it, revisiting it, sometimes rushing, sometimes slowing down. I see that uh, we, I think the, the college, when we, instructors are doing everything that they can to manage this transition. And also, I think we all realize how difficult it is to be physically disconnected from, I mean, it's very difficult for me to be disconnected from my students. And I think we, it will, in the years to come, it will definitely modify the teaching model because I think a lot more things will be online, but I think it will make people really cherish and understand the, the amazing potential of uh, teaching face-to-face -face with someone something that a lot of people have taken for granted for so many years. And I remember maybe 10 years ago when everyone was saying that there was no difference between teaching in classroom and teaching online. I think that we are seeing now that the, the human piece, the element is so, and the empathy and the, the understanding, the ability to relate uh, to anticipate needs, um, even, even for students who can't even formulate what their needs are, um, is, is a great gift that we have as, um, as humans. And it's a lot of our, our work and I think our responsibility as instructors to 
keep them motivated, to keep them engaged, and to, to do a lot more mentoring. That means also, um, you know, and of course it's very flexible and it depends a lot on what people are willing to do. But personally, I think I'll be doing a lot of office hours, one-on-one. -on -one. That's easy enough on Zoom. It works very well if it's just one person. And being very attuned to what's going on, uh, anticipating the difficulties. It means being in a hyper-communication mode with the students. Uh, so we can support them through a different type of learning for right now. Well, as long as we can breathe, and as long as we can paint, and as long as we find ways of impacting people around us, I think we have a lot of privilege. Yes.